the Animal Rescuers has been adopted by Pet Planet. There is nothing more important to us than your pet's health. Here at the Animal Rescuers, we're all about the serious issues of unwanted, abandoned, and abused animals. But today we love our furry little critters. Here at the Brembley Hedge Rabbit Rescue, we are going to see the cutest of the cute. Let's go in, come on. Hi, I'm Kim Deslon, and I am an animal rescuer. We were founded in 1986 by Erica Royal, and we are an all-volunteer 501c3 organization. We also are a member of PAC 911, which has helped us tremendously over the years with all the adoption events they put out on throughout the, the county. Um, we currently are building a new shelter and are desperately in need of an air conditioner, an evap cooler, insulation, um, fans, lights, general items like that. We currently have 130 rabbits in our shelter. So this new facility will allow us to really expand and give the rabbits a wonderful home. What got you interested in rabbits? I got my first rabbit about 20 years ago and I just fell in love and found out about the rescue in, gosh, I want to say about um, 1999 uh, and really just grew to love rabbits even more, became a volunteer instantly and um, have been with the organi organization for a long, long time. Now that Easter's over, what is the connection between bunnies and Easter? Rabbits have no connection per se, this type of rabbit, to Easter. And they're a very misunderstood animal. They do not do well with kids. And unfortunately, we do find that many families will go out and simply purchase a rabbit for their young child right before Easter and not educate themselves as to what is needed for this animal and that they are in fact a high need animal. So it's a difficult time for us and we really don't look forward to it at the rescue. So if a parent brought this animal for a child for Easter, what are some of the things the parents need to be um, aware of? Hopefully they adopted the rabbit because the rescue would educate them as to how difficult they are to have in their home. First of all, they don't do well with young children under 10 years old. Uh, secondly, they do have to live indoors all year round. They cannot take temperatures over 80 degrees. They can be litter box trained. They need to be spayed and neutered. Um, they have a diet primarily of hay. So we often find uh, many times that families are allergic to hay. So that's one of the concerns. Plus these little guys don't like to be picked up and can bite or scratch young children. So that gives you a little bit of an overview of why we discourage families from getting rabbits. Now are all the, is that grouped into all different types of rabbits or is that just one specific? They all have different personalities. Every single rabbit, they could be the same breed, but yet they have a different personality. So our objective is to know the personality of the rabbit and match that to the rescue. And that happens through lots and lots of screening, finding out about the family, finding out what, that, where their time is spent, if they have young children, if they have other pets. And then we make that appropriate match. How does a rabbit fare with a dog or a cat? Or... It depends on the dog. If it's an aggressive dog, it's not going to do well. But many dogs do well with rabbits. Um, I have five rabbits and one dog, and he's actually frightened of my rabbits. <laughs> um, they generally do very well with cats. So again, it's, it's a matching situation, and the rabbit needs to run free and get exercise. So you can't have a scenario where that aggressive dog is also running free. So do your rabbits roam the house or, or do you keep them, what's the best way to create them? Ideally, it will be a space such as you see here. An X-Pen is ideal. They need space. They need space to move. We do not recommend any type of cage or hutch. Okay. This is recommended, or a room, if you can dedicate a room in your home to the rabbit, that would be perfect. 
Kim, you said that the rabbits eat uh, hay, right? They do, yes. But you have all the sower here. So we, can you tell me what Yes, we have a full line of supplies for rabbit owners throughout the valley. Of course, they do eat a small amount of pellets and we carry a variety. They, and what is this right here? Uh, these are all specialized pellets. This would be for a particular diet that they would require. Carrots, critical care apple banana. Hmm. Yes, that so they're like treats. In general, bunny should not have a lot of treats, but these are all very good for the bunny. And those are toys. Bunny toys. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. They, they love to toss, chew. They have okay. to chew. Very, very important to brush your bunny minimum once a week. So any rabbit that somebody gets from you will be a spay and or neutered rabbit? Absolutely, yeah. and we actually do microchip oh, the rabbits okay. too, so we can always track them. <laughs> thank so, you so much. Thank you so much. Do you trust the food you feed? At Pet Planet, our commitment is to helping our customers navigate through the confusing world of pet food, reading ingredient panels, asking critical questions about manufacturing and ingredient quality. Our pets rely on us to make the very best decisions we can for their health, happiness, and longevity. Pet Planet is here as your partner in pet health because there's nothing more important to us than your pet's health. When I have an asthma attack, I feel scared. Sometimes my parents have to take me to the hospital. I feel like a fish with no water. You know how to react to their asthma attacks. Here's how to prevent them. Call 1-866-NO-ATTACKS. Visit www.noattacks.org or call your doctor. Because even one attack is one too many. Welcome back to The Animal Rescuers, adopted by Pet Planet. One of the taglines for The Animal Rescuers is volunteering. Volunteers are the backbone of every single rescue group we feature. The groups would simply not survive without this true spirit of giving. Volunteers are the lifeblood of our rescue organizations and PAC 911. In that, we are mostly a volunteer organization. Everything depends on community stepping forward to help. It usually ends up that a few people do all the work and then they burn out. And so volunteers are essential to keep up the good work that PAC does and every one of the rescue organizations. If everybody would do something, we would get that much more done. So we really urge people to step up, volunteer, give a little bit of yourself. You'll see how good it feels. And it's part of the greater good. We have a couple hundred volunteers that help us out and thousands of donors in the community that you know, see what we do and support what we do, which is a critical piece to, to making it happen. We have a whole team of volunteers that once a month they rotate through, a list comes out and who they're supposed to call and talk to them and find out how the dog's doing. When a dog is deceased, we have a member that makes handmade sympathy cards and the sympathy card is sent out to everybody when their dog crosses over the Rainbow Bridge. It is one of the things that we want to be connected. I cannot stress again how important it is to have the volunteers that help us out. We would not be able to sustain on a daily basis without having people come in. And plenty of volunteer opportunities and again just, uh, just contact us, go to our website and uh, we will take care of the rest. We have whole families who will volunteer and if a child is really too little for anything horse related, we, they can work in a goat pen and they can go in the chicken house and they can pick up a chicken and carry it around all day. I have some great volunteers, foster people, they pretty much do everything.
extending all of my love and respect to all of the volunteers. You give so much of yourselves to these animals. You really are animal rescuers. The first Pet Planet store opened in 1996 after the devastating loss of our Cocker Spaniel to cancer. What we learned then about pet health was eye-opening. The food and the treats that we were giving him did not support his immune system and may have actually harmed him. Pet Planet was established to be a community resource, a store that offers only the healthiest products and the best knowledge on pet health issues. At Pet Planet, there is nothing more important to us than your pet's health. Come here. Welcome back to the Animal Rescuers, adopted by Pet Planet. Queen and Pixie have been together since birth and are very devoted to each other. They really complement each other and where one is, the other is not far behind. Both of them have grown into sweet, mellow and very lovable bunnies. They would do best with a family who would allow them to live in an open exercise pen. They are happy rabbits and get along with just about anybody. For a family looking to bring the joy of a mature, devoted pair of rabbits into their home, Quinn and Pixie are a combination that would be hard to beat. Hi, I'm Wendy Faircloth, Training Director at Villa La Paz with this week's training tip. This week we're going to be talking about name response. It's probably one of the most important things that you're going to train your dog. There's lots of things that are almost as important, but I think as a safety thing, with all dogs, I think their name response needs to be 100% all the time. So, uh, what we do when we train our dogs to respond to their names, they respond to their names usually when they want to in a non-distracted situation. When the dog becomes distracted, all of a sudden they shut their ears off and they completely forget about what their name is. And I do, when I do my classes, I demonstrate that. I'll, you know, bounce a ball or I'll shake my treat bag and the dog looks interested in the treat bag and the parents are calling, calling, calling the dogs and the dog's just absolutely not responding to their name. So I'm going to show you a few things, a few exercises that you can do. And it's something that you should practice every day with your dog to ensure that they have a name response 100% of the time, even under high distraction. My demonstrator dog is going to be Saranac. Uh, Saranac is my youngest dog, um, and she actually needs work on her name response because we haven't worked it in a while. So this is Saranac. I have some treats that I'm going to use as a distractor to try to distract her and I'm gonna call her, good girl, I'm gonna call her off the treats. What she's on right here, she is on a long line. So I can give her a little bit of freedom and call her back to me when she's a little bit farther away from me. Um, I also have a shorter long line. This one's only about 10 feet long. Um, if you don't want to give them that much freedom that quickly. And I also have two of her most favorite things in the world. One is a Frisbee and the other is a ball. Two of her favorite things. So I'm going to show you some exercises that we can do to provide distractions for the dog so then we can call them off. So this is my distraction. Good girl. Saranac. Saranac. She doesn't respond, I'm gonna make her, good girl. And I don't feed her at that point, I'm just going to pet her. Okay, so I'm gonna let her go back to distraction again. Saranac, good girl, good. Yay, we can see she needs work on this. 
Saranac? Yes, good. So that time I wanted to make sure that Saranac had a success. So I called her before she went to the distraction. Good girl, you can go back to the distraction. Saranac, yay, good girl. So that time I did not need to pull her away. So I'm gonna let her go back to her distraction again. Saranac, yay, good. And so I reward. So you want to make it worthwhile for your dog to respond. Because so often the dogs get distracted, we call their names, they look at us and respond to us, and we don't recognize them for that. So I'm going to up the ante a little bit. She loves her some balls. Saranac. Yay, good girl. She loves her ball, so I'm going to throw her ball once and she's going to go chase it. Ready, Nick, ready? Good girl, yay! Good girl. Good. Good girl, yes. This time, I'm gonna toss her ball out, but I'm not gonna let her, I am not gonna let her go get it, and I'm gonna call her, in a sense, off of it. Sarah Nick, yes, good. So I started to let her chase it for a minute. Good girl, go get your ball. Come on, go get it. Good girl. Get your ball. Get it. Good girl. Yay, good girl. One more time. Good. I'm gonna toss it out there. Saranac, yay, good girl. I wanna call her and I wanna just, you're gonna start with low distraction and just build that reward system for the dog actually responding to their name. And then as you progress, once she's responding to her name with low distraction, then her high distraction would be a ball. So then I would use a ball and call her off of a ball. So stay tuned to the Animal Rescuers for next week's training tip from Villa La Paz. Do you trust the food you feed? At Pet Planet, our commitment is to helping our customers navigate through the confusing world of pet food, reading ingredient panels, asking critical questions about manufacturing and ingredient quality. Our pets rely on us to make the very best decisions we can for their health, happiness, and longevity. Pet Planet is here as your partner in pet health because there's nothing more important to us than your pet's health. It started out like a totally normal day. I love you. I mean, I guess I was a little sweaty and I was definitely sore. I thought I had gas. Turns out I was having a heart attack. Heart disease is the number one killer of American women. So now I take care of my heart and I tell the women in my life to do the same. Sounds great, by the way. That's nice, sweetie, but that's not my heart. That is. Find out more from the American Heart Association at GoRedForWomen.org. Hi, I'm Jen, and this is your Pet Planet Pet Tip of the Week. This week, we're going to focus on water safety. Whether you're taking your dog paddling in a canoe or out boating on the lake, please make sure you consider wearing a life jacket. Don't assume that your dog can swim. And in fact, even if your dog can swim, a lot of dogs are not strong swimmers. Consider this, if your pet were to fall overboard, would they have enough endurance and strength to avoid exhaustion or even hypothermia if they fall into very cold water? Fast currents can be stronger than his strength to outswim them. The distance to the shore may be further than he can swim. He may become disoriented and actually not even swim towards shore. A dog jumps from or is thrown from a boat at high speeds can be injured when they impact the water. There are many different types of life jackets on the market today. Canine friendly is probably Pet Planet's favorite. Reason being, they are a bright orange color so they're easily seen in the water. This life jacket has a adjustable clips at the, both the neck and the chest to make an easy fit for your pet. They also have a comfort grip off the top so if you're having to reach into the water to grab you and lift your dog out of the water, it makes it a lot easier on you. You can also use these as a temporary harness when you're going from the car to the boat. There's a D-ring clip here for leash attachment. 
If your home has a pool in the backyard, this too poses very serious potential safety risks. Pool safety for pets is as synonymous as it is for children, and it goes far beyond just careful supervision. With pets and children, you should never assume that you can watch them all the time. It only takes a few seconds of distraction for either one to fly out the door and into the pool. Here are just a few of the issues you should consider. Dogs are just as much at risk for pool accidents as children are. Not all dogs have the ability to swim. Certain breeds, as well as handicapped and older pets, may have special difficulties. Keep the pool area fenced and secure. Purchase pet pool safety products that can help your pets get safely out of the water. These could include things such as ramps, again life jackets, and pool alarms. Pools are not the only danger. Ponds and hot tubs can also have the same fatal effects. Most importantly, never leave your pets unsupervised near open water, as accidents, they can happen in just a split second. One final consideration is after swimming pet care. Dogs that swim a lot are prone to what's called swimmer's ear, which is an infection that occurs when you leave the ears wet after swimming. The prevention is simple. After your dog goes for a swim, be sure to clean their ears thoroughly using an ear cleaner that's specifically designed for pets and then make sure that you dry them thoroughly. Stay tuned next week for another Pet Planet Pet Tip. More of the animal rescuers coming right up. Honey! Um. I'm okay! Welcome back to the Animal Rescuers, adopted by Pet Planet. This week we went back out to Dream Chasers to check out a reconnective healing workshop. And you know what? A birthday party had broken out while we were there. PAC 911 held a pause around the fountain adoption event at Fountain Hills, so many came out looking for a new furry friend. And so many went home with the perfect
I have a warm and cuddly feeling about this show. Could it be because of this little girl? This is Kimberly reminding you to adopt, donate, volunteer, spay and neuter, and you can be an animal rescuer too. We'll see you next time. Okay. Kim, do something so he can have an outtake, please, from you. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. All right, let's rock this one more time. Okay. Ah, you're going to have to wait for a minute. Go. Hi, I'm Jen, and this is your Pet Planet Pet Tip of the Week. This week, we're going to focus on water safety. <laughs> How about that? That's what we're going to focus on. I There's too many outtakes I have. I have more outtakes than I do show. <laughs>